Hello, my name is Regis Filibert. I work at the New Dynamic, where we create a lot of Hugo websites. And over the years, we realized there was a lot of redundant stuff that we had to do every time we created a website, namely setting up your asset pipelines, your CSS, your Tailwind, and your JavaScript, your GSX, or whatever, all the compilation, the media transformation as well, the self-hosted fonts. So we wanted to speed up that process. And for, for that, we created a framework called Huge. Huge takes a lot of the most recent features of Hugo, like the asset pipelines, the media transformation, and put them back into where we think they belong, which is declaration files, configuration files. That's what we love about Hugo, the fact that it's declarative. A lot of stuff happening in configuration files, and then the templates take care of the rest. So Huge does that. You create a few JavaScript files, you declare them in your configuration files, you tell Huge how to process them, how to compile them, how to minify or fingerprint them, and then in the templates, it's a very basic partial. So today I want to take you through Huge and its uh, core concept, namely JavaScript, CSS, also self-hosted fonts, and uh, the fact that you can also use environment variables with it, uh, you like your own little dot .m, but for Hugo. Let's go. The first thing I want to tell you about is the Huge Wiki, which lives at the repos of Huge at github.com slash the new dynamic slash Huge slash wiki. And there, every features of Huge are heavily detailed uh, with all of the setup, all that you can do, the configuration files, what the output is, and all the list of the parameters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I strongly advise you to go back to it to check out each of its features in detail after this talk. Thank you. So as you can see, we have a very basic Hugo project. That's the front end. There's nothing there yet. I mean, there's no style, there's no JavaScript, nothing, just HTML. Uh, it's a very simple uh, project, uh, very basic, a few partials, and um, a config YAML file, which for, for now is really nothing. So the first, the first thing you want to do is really make sure that your Hugo project is a Hugo module in itself, so that it's going to be able to import other Hugo module. And the way to do that is um, to use the Hugo mod init function, and then the parameter would be your repo. It's all right if it doesn't exist yet. Uh, you can put anything for now. Emoji classics will do. And now you can see that it's been initialized because you have this very simple Go mod file that just registers the Go version and you know the repo, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Now back to your config.yaml file. What you want to do is add module and then imports. And then one of those imports, actually the only one we'll need for now is github.com slash the new dynamic, which I for capital, capital letters because they're important, and huge. And now I can run a quick Hugo uh, so that it's gonna build the site, download all of the modules that are dependent of huge. And you can see now I've got a go some file, which means it has registered all of those things. Huge is importing its own little modules, so that's why you, you see uh, several stuff there. And now we have huge installed. Before moving forward, uh, there's one more thing you need to do in order for huge to work is that we're going to have to mount its configuration files into your own project. There's not, there's no way for a huge to instruct you go to do that by itself because it's an important module. So you as a project owner will have to do this. Um, so you can just add mounts to your module config and we're going to register several. So the thing we want for huge is this one. So source is huge config and the target will be assets huge config. To make sure that it works proper, we're gonna also import assets, uh, you know, the main directory. All right, so now that we're ready to use huge, we're gonna have to start and add our first configuration file. We're gonna start with the styles. Um, I, you can see I've got those assets files here and I want to, you know, being able to register them. If I was using um, Hugo, you would have to go resources, is get SCSS, main SCSS, etc., etc. Apply to various transformations, fingerprinting, minifying, depending on your environment, etc., etc. With Huge, it's going to be much more easier than that. It's just going to be a configuration file where we register our styles before we pull them. So, um, the first file we want to create is going to be at the root, and it's a uh, huge config, and then styles.yaml, and in there, uh, 
the loan parameter for now will be an array of styles that we register. There's going to be several, several parameters for each style, but the most critical one is the name. Uh, we're going to call this one main, and that's the ID by which we'll reference it whenever we need to load it on the site. And then the path, obviously, so huge knows where to find it. It's relative to your uh, assets directory. So here it's scss slash main.scss. Now that I've done that, uh, I can go back into my template file here, and there is an available partials. You're going to find this partials is uh, for many features of huge. It's called tags uh, because it prints the tags that you need for that particular uh, feature declaration or whatever. So here it's inside a huge styles, which is the module, the feature, whatever you want to call it, and tags. And then, of course, now is the ID of the style we want to print the tag of. Uh, here is main. So if I start doing this, now all of a sudden, boom, I get my uh, beautiful site here with my SS, SS, CSS, whatever. And here you can see that it works. Um, if I change the uh, color of the text for the whole, for the whole body, you can see that it works uh, nicely. Everything is red now. <laughs> okay, now let's look at the file that we've been that has been imported by Huge. It is here, uh, CSS men dot CSS. Now we could uh, apply a bit of more uh, stuff. Let's start with fingerprinting because it's easy to check. Fingerprint will add a hash to the name of your file. It's a, a basic Hugo pipes transformation. So fingerprint, if you set it to always, it means it will always fingerprint it. Now, Hugo doesn't necessarily watch uh, the huge configuration files. So you're going to have to restart the server. Obviously, you're not going to edit your styles configuration too often during the project, but uh, here it is. And now if I restart, uh, I can check that my, my file has been fingerprinted. Here it is. The other thing you can do is uh, set your style to be internal, which means it will be in line, uh, you know, wrapped in a style tag. So you just use internal. You set it to true. And now if I restart um, the server, we're going to see that it is here inside a little style tag. And again, it's a great way to explore the uh, minify. Minify uh, parameter, we'll set it to always, uh, just like we've done with fingerprinting. And now if I restart the page, you can see that our style has been minified. So we've set those to always, uh, but it can also be, it should actually be uh, usually a an environment. Uh, so production, staging, uh, you name it. And it can be an array of environments so that it will be, you know, active in production, but also on staging. And, you know, you can have that for both. It's usually how it plays. Uh, there is on the huge wiki a reminder of what an environment is in Hugo, so I invite you to read through this in the environment section. We'll get back to this later to make sure you know what your staging, production, and all of your environments are. Now, we've only loaded one style main, but let's say we want to load two. For example, we would have a critical style and uh, that we want to be in line, and then we want a regular style. Uh, that will be loaded afterwards. So I'm going to remove the base from here. And it might break the site a bit, but it's temporary. And uh, I'm going to create a critical.scss file that will import the base. And now I will add my new uh, style. So its name will be critical. Its path will be scss slash critical.scss and it's an internal one, true. All good. And now in my base off, uh, instead of just using a string as main, I will be able to use a slice. As you know, a slice in Hugo is um, just an array. So here we are going to be loading critical and then we call it main. And when I save, oh, my style is back to normal. And if I look inside of the head, you can see I've got my base up here, and then below it, I have my main.css. So everything is loaded uh, inside of my site.
Okay, so you have your style set. It's all working fine, but you probably want a little bit more out of this than just SAS. There's a few transformations that you can add to any style, and there are, will be referenced underneath the use key for the parameter. Now, the transformation available to you are post CSS, obviously, but also post process, which is used to transform your style after Hugo has built, generally for purging CSS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What we want to look into, though, is more common. Thing, which is Tailwind. Tailwind has its own transformation, uh, which will know how to apply different transformations that Tailwind needs. Um, so if you have a, a Tailwind config file at the root, uh, and if you have a post CSS config file at the root, and if you have npm install Tailwind, obviously, if you only apply Tailwind to your style, then you should have Tailwind uh, available to you in the browser. So let's take a look. And uh, now, if I do head, if I open my new tab, yeah, so all of this is Tailwind, so I can see that Tailwind has been loaded. And now you can use, uh, you can freely use Tailwind anywhere from your code. So if I go to the phase off, for example, and I want to update the site title, text red 500, and now I can see that my text has been updated using a Tailwind, you know, basic stuff. So what it's great is that you can actually use SAS and Tailwind if that's your thing. I mean, it's often useful. I could even go into my assets and uh, use the apply thing from Tailwind. So let's go to collection and I want to apply a background on the little cards with the emojis. Uh, so let's say apply BG3. 200, and if I save and wait a bit, this telling takes a while. Yep, I have my background um, nice and smooth. So that's the general idea that you can use easily use Tailwind with Hugo. Now, be aware that I've been using Tailwind 2 for this demo. You can definitely use Tailwind 3 now with the new, uh, with the latest version of Hugo, but you need to check out the doc because there's a few stuff to add to your configuration file for this. Now let's cover the scripts module of Huge. Uh, it's very similar to styles. Um, so let's jump right in. So first I wanna show you what I've got underneath the assets directory, I've got a script, it's very basic. It's gonna be loading on a few emojis in order to animate um, this part over there at the top with this little thingy, paintbrush thingy. Uh, so I first need to register that script, just like I registered my style. So we go to huge. Now we need to create a new file called scripts. Demo. Mm, just like style, it takes one thing for now. It's an array of scripts that we register. It will take a name. Again, let's call it main. And it'll take a path. The path is scripts slash um, main.js. And that should probably restart. I will go into my phase off where I had my little main script here and now just same thing except it's huge scripts tags and I want my main script to be added to the project. And if I save, I bet now we're gonna be able to see, yep, that little thing is animated at the top. It's um, really nice. Scripts, just like styles, have uh, a set of things which are uh, similar to uh, styles. So you have fingerprinting, you have minification, you got all that jazz. But you also have other stuff that are very useful, um, like params. So if, for example, you want to pass down params to your script that goes comes from Hugo, for example, here the you know the configuration file. Let's say I've got my uh, my emojis here. But I want to add them to the params. Um, like this. So it's going to be an array of emojis. I saved you my keyboard struggles. And um, now what I need to do to my main is import like this. So you import everything from the params that are being sent down by Hugo and Huge. Uh, from params. That's not a huge feature, by the way, that's just uh, Hugo, but here we are easing up the adding of those params. 
through the through the scripts. And now my emojis will be available from params. So I want to grab the emojis from params. And now this thing, emojis, will just work exactly. Yep, obviously, because that's underneath emojis. I need to register with the key. Params is not enough. So that's emojis inside of params. And now if I restore uh, the proper one, yeah, this kind of starts. That's nice, but what you'll usually want is something a bit more dynamic. I mean, going from having your emojis in your uh, JavaScript file to having your emojis to your params is, is not really ideal. What you really want is you go to fetch them themselves, for example. So let's create that use case. Let's say we want to grab the Dumbo emojis and pass them down to our script. Now, you don't have any way to, did, to do this simply from um, your, your, your params file. You're going to have to add this through the template. And uh, huge lets you do that. So let's remove those for now. And now go back to the template, the base of. So here first, I'm going to have to uh, grab those. So site get page uh, Dumbo. And um, I think this is characters. Okay, so site Dumbo with params characters. Range on the name. Okay, so let's say emojis are a slice of love. Append to emojis. I can just range this and we'll append the name to the list of, oh, not the name, we'll append emoji to the list of those. And now we have a, an array of emojis. I mean, I think I want. Uh, yeah, I can see my list of Dumbo emojis. So what Huge lets you do is that instead of just recording a slice or a string, you can have uh, an object, so uh, a map that is invoked with a dictionary function. Here you go. So the only thing you need is to register the ID again. So the name has to be referenced. The name is main. And then you can set your set of parameters. Uh, here we want params. And again, it's uh, a dict. I'm not going to do the same mistake. Emojis is emoji. Now, what you will do is that it will find this script that is registered here. It will grab the first information that he has from the from the YAML file. So if we add our fingerprinting or our minifying, etc., it would, it would still use that. But then it would override it with whatever we pass down here, meaning adding the params to it. And now if I load my script, I should be able to see up there. Yes, the emojis from Dumbo are, um, you know, used in the script. Pretty straightforward, right? Getting back to the wiki quickly for scripts, because there's some stuff we didn't cover. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like the loading strategy that you can customize, the cross origin attribute, you can customize it as well. Um, and of course, anything that Hugo will apply to scripts like the target, the shims, the externals, the inject, anything, you can add it to your configuration file. We only covered params, unfortunately, but the rest, you can check it out by yourself. All right, so now about the fonts. Uh, this is huge, also helps you do, if you want to customize the font for your header, for example, by adding self-hosted fonts and everything you need to do that, which is the preloads, but also the font face with all of your sources, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the easiest way to do it is with huge. You just need a couple of files, you know, your font files inside of your assets directory, and then yet another uh, YAML file inside of your huge config directory. This one is called fonts. And I also had already added one font. Uh, the family is Joe's. Now it's going to be, you don't need to add font family, font weight, whatever in front of it. Huge is uh, smart enough to know what to do with that. And it also needs to point to a file. Uh, you're going to notice it's a base name. It's not, there's no extension in there because Hugo will go through all of the files with that base name and, you know, pick every extension and generate the proper source uh, and format for it. I'll add a little bit more fonts uh, hurriedly to it. Uh, okay. I'm going to double check that my header has the proper font here. Yes, font family is Joost. And then the only thing I need to do to my base off is load the fonts. 
and um, I created a head partial, so it cleans it up. I got all of my previous stuff here. Now partial, huge, font, tags. And I don't need anything here, so I'll just call it fonts. And now, as we will we'll be able to see, my, uh, my font has been loaded. And now if we inspect, to double check what huge has been printed for us, we can see I've got all of my preloaded font files and I've got my font face with all of the proper types and formats and, and everything. So that's pretty neat. Uh, you should definitely check out the wiki for fonts because there's a lot of stuff I didn't cover. Um, but yeah. So now let's talk about environment. Huge uh, allows you with its end of module to get a lot of stuff from the environment. Uh, again, you should definitely read this to know what the environment is or what it's not. And now we're going to try and using some of these uh, functions. So the first one is huge and get. I'm going to add it to the title so that we can see it right from the window below. So if I huge, if I use a partial huge and get, now I'm going to see the environment, which is development. That's because I'm running Hugo server. If we're using uh, the build, it would be production, or if you had set it yourself through Hugo, and uh, it would be different. Obviously, uh, I can show you. For example, if I say Hugo and is uh, staging, and then Hugo serve, then I'm going to see staging inside instead of my title. That's pretty. Uh, so that's one function. There's many others that you should check in the wiki that uh, helps you do that. So you can get the environment to compare it, for example, but you can also ask Hugo and is, and then you go and is production or is it staging? You can ask also if it's not something. And, um, and finally, you can use get var. Get var is uh, more interesting because it allows you to get custom variables uh, that you've set yourself. So for example, let's say that we start again with Hugo and uh, Hugo, let's say call it Hugo name is uh, Regis, and I do Hugo serve. Now, of course, I need to refresh. It's still say development because that's not what I asked. Now I'm gonna ask it to get bar and the name of the variable is Hugo name. And now I get to see my environment viable QA, uh, which is reaches. Now it's not always uh, very easy to get those locally. On Netlify, you've got you've got them set up somewhere, it's all, all fine and dandy, but when you're a local environment, you can't use a dot and file with Hugo like you can in JavaScript. So huge also helps you with that. Now um, you can add an end file to huge, call it YAML. And then we'll call it somewhere else. Hugo City is San Francisco. Okay. And now for my Bezoff, I can use the get var function. Uh, I call it Hugo City. And that can restart. Refresh. And now here I get San Francisco in my little window over there. Um, because I was able to get that bar. Now, the only thing you got to do is make sure you git ignore this thing. You add it to git ignore the nth.yaml file from huge config, and you have like this kind of like your own little dot env, but for Hugo, and that can be pretty useful. Actually, there's a little exercise we can do in conjunction with scripts and env uh, with the get bar thingy. So, for example, let's say we have a data API we want to add to our script. Uh, let's call it API key. Uh, sounds good. And now if I go to my head, um, I can add an attribute to the tag of my script with attributes. Let's call it data key and then partial huge and get bar. The name of my bar. Here it is. Let's save and um, inspect. I've got my data key set here. It's uh, yeah, great. All right. Sadly, we were not able to cover everything, but I still want to tell you about media, which you can go to the wiki to check out. Uh, it's a very simple API that allows you with a simple partial to transform an image and then invoke its 
rel permalink or permalink and you know have hugo generate it for you it also works with imagex so if you have an imagex account you can set up a domain set up some defaults and then use the exact same partial and the transformation will match whatever imagex transformation api that is uh, so that's pretty cool. It also does SEO brilliantly, which means with zero configuration, uh, it's going to try and guess from your title, your image, whatever, um, what your value should be for your SEO meta tags. But you also have some configuration you can do, again, with a YAML file uh, to make sure that everything is taken into account. And you can use your own little partial huge SEO data to just override that logic with whatever you have. And if the wiki URL is a bit hard to remember, remember this one, huge.dev, which is a simple landing page whose sole purpose is to get you to the wiki. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of HugoCon.